Susie is a 22-year-old primiparous woman who had a planned and uncomplicated pregnancy. She has been married for one year and has been in a relationship for three years with the father of her daughter. The delivery took place four hours ago. She had an induced vaginal birth at 45 sevenths oxytocin induction. Everything went well, no epidural. Susie had a second degree perineal tear with mild edema. You start your evening shift and this is your first visit to the room. Respecting infection control measures is required in all circumstances. Before initial patient contact, the medical staff has to wash their hands. It is one of the four moments of hand hygiene. Knocking on the door before entering shows respect from the nurse towards the family. It also respects their privacy. Hi, Hi come in. Okay. So, my name is Mary. I will be your nurse for tonight. So can you please tell me your name and date of birth? My name is Susie Smith, and I was born March 31st, 1999. Okay, thank you. It is important to verify the user's identity twice in order to minimize the risk of making errors. So, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I'm just glad that the, that the delivery went well. Yes, it's <laughs> great. Pregnancy and childbirth bring their share of changes on the physical and emotional levels. The nurse therefore inquires about the mother's condition. She asks about the mother's perception on how the delivery unfolded. Sometimes the birth does not go according to the parent's plan and can generate frustrations or other negative feelings. It is crucial to allow parents to verbalize their emotions, whether they be positive or negative regarding the birth experience. This listening space allows parents to express their feelings and ask many questions they may have. It also allows them to target eventual needs, to leave no emotions unresolved, and to eliminate fears about the future. Great. Okay, so are you in any pain? No, no pain at all. Pain assessment is an important part of the postpartum evaluation. Many causes can explain the presence of pain. Based on her assessment, the nurse will decide to administer medication to ease the user's pain if necessary. When choosing the medication, the nurse must pay particular attention to whether or not the user chose to breastfeed. In the case of breastfeeding, the administration of a narcotic medication should be avoided. Okay, so I will not take your vital signs, okay, if you allow me? Yes, of course. Thank you. In the case of immediate postpartum, monitoring basic parameters includes measuring blood pressure, heart rate, respiratory rate, and saturation. This should be done every 15 minutes for the first hour postpartum, then every half hour for the subsequent hour, and every four hours for the next 24 hours. After that period, it can be done once per shift if the results are normal and stable. Blood pressure and vital signs, all is good. Um, I'll now perform the uterine massage and I will assess your Nokia. Okay, right. um, let me just write this down just a second. Okay, so we'll put you in a comfortable position. Okay, so there we go. So I'll just lower the head of the bed. Let me know if you're okay. Everything's fine. Okay, I will ask you to bend your knees slightly. Yes, I can help you with that. Just a little bit. Can you lower your underwear? Yes, so you're you're familiar with the procedure. Yes, I did it over an hour ago. Okay, so you know it can be a bit uncomfortable. Oh, I know. Okay, I apologize. Lochia is uterine discharge made of blood, fluid, and mucus fragments, which show the healing of the uterine wound left by the expulsion of the placenta after childbirth. A uterine massage is performed after vaginal birth only. After a C-section, the nurse will only palpate the uterus without massaging 
in order to assess its position and firmness. During the uterine massage or palpation, the nurse locates the uterine fundus and situates it in relation to the user's umbilicus. To do this, the nurse cups her hand just under the umbilicus of the user and presses firmly on the abdomen. At the same time, she anchors the lower segment of the uterus at the pubic symphysis with the other hand. The measurement of the uterine position is done in finger's width. If the uterus is one finger higher than the umbilicus, it is said to be at plus one. If the uterus is lower than the umbilicus, the uterine fundus is said to be at minus one centimeters or lower, according to the result of the measurement obtained. The nurse notes the volume and shape of the uterus, whether it is centered or deviated from the umbilicus. A deviation can be explained by a full bladder. If the uterus is firm, the nurse will only perform a uterine palpation. If the uterus is soft, the nurse will massage the uterus with her hands until the uterus is firm again. The nurse assesses the quantity of lochia as well as the presence of clots. She also evaluates its smell, color, and appearance. She notes the amount of sanitary pads the user soils per hour, the presence of clots, their number, and size. It is normal to observe an increase in vaginal blood flow if a uterine massage is performed. In addition, during this assessment, the nurse will carefully observe the user's perineum to evaluate tears or the condition of the episiotomy. During this assessment, the nurse will carefully observe the user's perineum to evaluate tears or the condition of the episiotomy. You're doing great. Okay, so everything's in order. I will change your sanitary pad if it's okay with you. So let me just do this. Can you just lift your butt? Oh, very good. Thank you. Okay. Almost done. Changing the sanitary pad makes it possible to evaluate from a new clean pad the quantity of lochia on a given period. The nurse lifts the user's buttock slightly to expose the perineum in order to make a complete assessment of the area. The nurse must make sure that there is adequate lighting during this assessment. She will assess the episiotomy if applicable, the stitches, the presence of any signs of infection, the presence of tears, the integrity of the tissues, the presence of ecchymosis, edema, hematoma, redness, or abnormal discharge. She will also determine if there are hemorrhoids. Okay, all I have to do is to check your perineum. So can you please turn to your side, whichever is more comfortable? Mm -hmm. There you go. Thank you. This will take a second. Okay. That's it. You can come back to a comfortable position. Um, okay, so have you urinated since giving birth? Yes, uh, about 20 minutes the first ago, postpartum mission yeah. must be done within the first six hours after the birth. During the uterine palpation, the nurse also assesses the presence of a vesicle globe. Okay, um, is there anything I can do before I go? No, you did enough, thank you. Yes, you can get some rest now. No, I will get some rest while the baby's asleep. Right, good idea. You can call us if you need anything, any question, okay? okay. There are no stupid questions, don't worry. You can ask me anything. Thank you so All much. All right, get some rest. You're doing great.
Placing the call bell near the user is an important safety principle, making it simple for the user to call for help if needed. The nurse reassures and puts the user at ease by offering her availability.